we're going to solve a system of equations, and we've got two ways to do it. This is a little different. I've got an audience over here. This is a little different than the way the textbook covers it. So I've got two equations here, 3x plus y equals negative 7 and x minus y equals negative 5. So I'm going to solve them for y and graph them. So I've got 3x plus y equals negative 7, and I want my y by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 3x to the other side, and I have y equals, because I like slope-intercept form, that y equals mx plus b, I'm going to put my negative 3x first, and then minus 7. So now I can graph this. It crosses at negative 7, so I have my excellent graph over here. I'm going to add two more tick marks so I can get down to negative 7. There's my y-intercept. Negative 3, or negative 3 over 1 is my slope. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to rise 3. No, I'm not. I'm going to go down 3 because it's negative. One, two, three, and I'm going to run one in the positive direction. My other option is if I, you know, if I put the negative down here, I still have negative three. So I could go up three, rise three, and move in the negative direction one. Either way, I make a nice line, and now I need to find something straight. Hold on, file cabinet. This is amazing, isn't it? You can always use like a, oh, using power, hold on. Okay, we're good. We can always use a notebook for a straight edge. All right, there we go. Nice straight edge. All right. All right, the other equation is x minus y equals negative 5. I'll take my x to the other side. This is negative y equals negative x minus 5. I don't want negative y. I want positive y. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And make sure you're still on the screen. Right, we get y equals negative divided by negative is positive. Negative divided by negative is positive. So this graph crosses the y-axis at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has a slope of 1. Make it a fraction so you have a rise and a run. I'm going to rise one and run one. Or I could also have like a negative one over negative one because that would still equal one. So I could go down one into the left one. And I don't have my straight edge with me. It's uh, where is it? Here it is. It's going to be very challenging. Alright, so uh, right here is the place where the two lines intersect. And this looks like it would be negative 3, 2. That's, a, that's just, just a guess. So, hold on. Oh, look, it's Miss Ragsdale. Miss Ragsdale, I don't know if this is the right okay. answer. Oh, she was, what could we do? Could we substitute into each equation and see if it works? We could. And if we did that, we would find out if it works. That's right, we could. What's another way we could solve this? I always like to do them by elimination because that tells me the real ordered pair and I don't have to guess. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's just swivel back around. I think we're high tech here. So. And you all just kind of close up on my face. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
Yes, elimination works really well if the X's are lined up and the Y's are lined up and the numbers are lined up, and they are. And most people like to add their equations together. I like adding. Ms. Ragsdale likes adding. So, if the numbers are opposites like this, which they are, you add, okay, 3x plus 1x is? 4x. Y plus negative Y. 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0, so it must be 0. Negative 7 and a negative 5 give you? Negative 12. I need to solve this, and I get x equals negative 3. And if I know that, then I can surely find the other value. But which equation would be nicer to use, the first or the second? Okay, I guess it really doesn't matter. How about? I want the second one. She says the second one. So we've got x minus y equals negative 5. All right, x is negative 3. I substitute it in there. I need to solve, so I add 3 to the other side. It gives me negative y equals negative 2. Divide by negative 1. y equals 2. So I get negative 3, 2, just like we did earlier. Yay! If you wanted to make this a little more challenging, you could have used the x's, but you would want this to be a negative 3x. To do that, you would multiply this whole equation by negative 3. And I know you got a glare on it, so that would give you negative 3x plus 3y equals positive 15. And then you can do the same thing we just did. Okay, and last way to solve this is another way we could do it. Substitution. Substitution. That works great if it says y equals or x equals, and so in your expert opinion, what would be the easiest one to solve for? Well, since the x is positive in the second one, that would be easy, or I could choose the y in the first one because it's also by itself. Okay, so if I want this to say x equals, I take my y over there and I get x equals y minus 5. Now, I know x equals y minus 5, so I take this to the other equation and put it in for x. 3 times x is y minus 5 plus y equals negative 7. 3y minus 15 plus y equals negative 7. 3y and 1y is 4y. Minus 15 equals negative 7. This was an in-person class. I could make all sorts of mistakes, and you all could correct them. Yay! <laughs> I add 15. 4y equals 15 minus 7. Positive. Divide by 4. I get y equals 2. All right, so I've got y equals 2. Can I use this, this, or this to get my x? suppose you could. This one, it already has an x equals. So if you use this one, you know y is 2. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So let's see if I can squeeze this in here. x equals y minus 5. We just found y is 2, so 2 minus 5. And so we've got our ordered pair again is negative 3. Positive 2. Thank you. So we, we did this three different ways. <laughs>